It happens sometimes. You're sitting quietly, a favorite mug or bowl by your side, when you move just the wrong way and... Womp womp. But what if I told you that there is an alternative to just trashing it, or doing a kludgy superglue repair? Kintsugi, also called kintsukuroi, is the Japanese art of repairing broken ceramics with lacquer and powdered gold. It's part of a philosophy of embracing flaws and imperfections, instead of hiding or rejecting them. Traditional kintsugi repair is a painstaking art. It can take months for a skilled crafter to complete one piece. But you ain't got time for that, you're on the internet. Today, I'll be sharing the DIY version with quick dry epoxy resin and metallic pigment. If you don't need your piece to be food safe, you can use your favorite super glue. But I've had mixed results with these. The bond is strong, but I could still break pieces off by hand with some effort. Also, the textures leave a bit to be desired. However, if your pieces have more surface area together, it's much harder to separate them. One final note on materials. Your surfaces need to be clean and dry. I thought it might be cool to paint the edges with ink before gluing. Do not do this. It looks pretty, but it will mess up the adhesion, so the pieces will fall apart very easily. Before you start messing with epoxy resin or other strong chemicals, follow some basic lab safety. Make sure any long hair is tied back out of your face. Strong adhesives often have nasty fumes, and smell bad. So work in a well-ventilated area, and wear a mask to protect your nose and lungs. Wear safety gloves. You do not want fresh epoxy getting on your skin. Once all the safety gear is in place, let's begin. Make sure all of your surfaces are clean and dry. You may want to do some light sanding to rough up the edges for better adhesion, and create more of a gap for the gold to show through. Make sure you have all the pieces you need, and do some dry fitting to get a sense of how everything should come together. You might want to fit smaller chunks or more delicate pieces separately from the rest. Lay out your pieces in a way that makes sense to you. Then, pick two to start gluing. Double check your fit, and make sure you understand the positioning. Epoxy resin is extremely durable when it dries, with no easy undoing. Epoxy resin comes as a two-part resin and hardener combo. Carefully pour out a little resin, followed by an equal amount of the hardener. Mix them up real good, along with the pigment you want to use. I have Pearl X Aztec Gold here. Once everything is thoroughly mixed and looking smooth, use the mixing stick to coat each surface you're about to stick together. Firmly press your pieces together. It's fine to get some resin squeezing out. You want a nice solid layer that fills all of the gap between the pieces. We can clean it up later. If the bond is wobbly, Hold the pieces together and adjust as needed while it dries. The quick dry formula has a working time of around five minutes. I'll usually have enough time to put two or three pieces together before the resin is too hard to work easily, and I need to mix up a fresh batch. It should be stable after a few minutes, and rock solid after it's had time to cure. When you have two or three pieces solidly together and lined up well, set them aside and let the bond cure overnight. Depending on the project, you can use that drying time to stick even more pieces together. When you have a few smaller pieces solidly glued together into bigger chunks, you can start putting those together with the same process.
carefully press everything together, and we'll come back and check on this after it's had time to cure. Wait, that doesn't look good. Oh no! I know this process is about embracing imperfections, but that dried way out of line. And epoxy resin is impossible to pull apart once it's fully cured. What can we do? So the brute force approach will not work here. Dissolving it with solvents didn't work either. But it turns out, putting it in boiling water for half an hour will soften hardened epoxy. At the cost of all the big pieces coming apart. Welp. Time to sand everything off and try again. Round two. A utility knife can be good for scraping off big chunks of dried resin. Sometimes you can start cutting with the knife and then peel it off with your fingers. This one was a little more stubborn. Since I'm already cleaning off excess resin, I might as well give myself a fully clean canvas to work with. For cleaning off thinner surface stains, I'm using Professional Strength Acetone Nail Polish Remover. I'll break out the utility knife again to scrape off more stubborn bits. It's not too hard to scrape dried resin off of a smooth surface. It's where the resin has bonded two surfaces together that it gets super tough. A final wipe down with the acetone, and this piece is done! Make sure it fits well. And let's re-glue it. You can also find epoxy glue in these convenient two-packs. They're good for small jobs and getting about the same amounts of resin and hardener in one quick shot. Carefully push it back into place, check the fit, and patch any little gaps. I do not want to have to redo this again. Looking good! But we do still have a significant gap with a little missing piece here. Know what the solution is? MORE RESIN! Just keep slapping in resin until the hole is filled, and then turn the mug over to let gravity help smooth things out. Dishwasher and microwave safe? Yeah, that's definitely not true anymore. With everything except the handle correctly back in place, now it's time to get all of the excess resin off the surface. Since the resin is completely cured and hardened by now, we don't really need the gloves anymore. Once again, our good friend Utility Knife is handy for scraping off large and small areas, stubborn spots, and dealing with those big resin seams. Ah, yes. Just look at that amazing peel-away action. Mostly done getting all the excess resin off the inside of the mug. This gap filling can be a little tricky to deal with at this stage. You can carve bits into shape with the utility knife, but be careful and mind your fingers. When all of the major bumps have been removed, I use a fine grit sandpaper to smooth everything out further. Oh. 
Aw, I messed up a little and took this chunk out while peeling resin. For filling and smoothing out small gaps like that, I'll just get a little bit of resin on a toothpick and apply carefully. Like so. And there it is. All patched up, all clean, and good for holding pens, if not hot chocolate. This member of the Elf Squad is now ready for next Christmas. I spent a lot of time cleaning excess resin off my mug. But if you like the messier look, you can leave it there. Some pieces look really cool with drips and more dimensional effects. For a more decorative piece, you can enhance the gold seams with some liquid leaf or a glossy liquid sealer of your choice. I'm using Mod Podge. Just mix your pigment in, grab a small paintbrush, and cover any dull or lightly damaged areas. You can carefully rub or scrape off any excess sealer if you need to. Just keep in mind, if your sealer is water-soluble, it might not hold up to a good washing. Ooh, shiny! Thank you, friends and adventurers, for joining me on this journey through fancy ceramics repair. If you enjoyed it, let me know by liking this video, leaving a comment, or even visiting my Ko-fi page. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a good one, everybody.